Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the first part of our GoLang for Absolute Beginners series. Today we are going to write and run our first program. Um, if you want to follow along, I recommend that it's all in for Go first. You can download it from golang.org and I will link to a video of me installing it in the description. Have a go and don't worry about making mistakes. That's all a part of learning. I will try to answer any questions you make in the comments too, wherever I can help. Um, so as we do this, we are going to introduce the main package that is the main program main just means kind of it kind of means it's yours really the bit that you're going to write and actually run the very top of the program the main function which is where all of the code begins the first thing that will run when your program starts a library package called fumpt or format that will allow us to write things to the screen and um the, the function inside that package called printf um we will write our own function and use that as well. So let's get on with it, shall we? First, I'm going to need a place to edit my code. I'm actually going to use Notepad. Feel free to use any text editor you like. Notepad is the one that comes with Windows, so it'll work. In future lessons, I will show you a couple of different ones. Don't worry too much about this. So here, file, new. Um, and I'm going to save this. I'll show you where you should save it. If you've got um, a Golang workspace already set up, you'll need to save it in there. Your Golang workspace should have three folders in it. It should have a bin, a package, and a source. Inside the source, that's SRC. So bin is short for binary, B-I-N. PKJ short for package and SRC short for source. This is where your code will go and you will make a new folder for this project. I'm going to make a new folder called lesson one. So this is new folder lesson one. And in lesson one, the folder I am going to save and you've got to be careful here because Notepad likes to think you want to save everything as text. But here we go. This is going to be so change it to all files in the savers type and then call it whatever you want dot go. So I'm going to call it lesson one dot go. We hit save and now we've got our file saved. Obviously as we code, we're going to need to save our changes. The first thing we're going to need to write at the top of our notepad of our text file, our go file, is the word package, package main. And what you're doing here is you're telling the compiler and the computer that this is the top level. This is the program that runs first. If you were declaring maybe a library package like Go has, like we'll introduce fumpt in a minute, you would actually write package fumpt here. But that's not what we're doing here. The next thing we need is our main function. And so to, to write a function, you need three things. Um, F U N C the word funk the name of the function and this has to be main main is the name of the function that runs every other function you can name whatever you like but the first function that runs when the go program begins is called main then you need an open bracket close bracket or parenthesis these are above the nine and the zero on most keyboards and then you need an open squiggly brace this is next to the P and you push shift to get it on most keyboards again um, and the closed squiggly brace after that inside here I'm going to tab in it's always helpful to use tabs so you can see what belongs to what so this is inside the main function and I'm going to write something to the screen I'm going to write fumpt dot print f and in this I'm going to write the string and I'm using quotes to say that this is this is a word that I want you to take as that word. I'm going to write hello world, just like that. And then I'm going to run this program. It won't work. I'll tell you why in a minute, but we're using this library function, fump, this library package called fumpt has a function inside it called printf. That's what we're using. And this takes a string, it actually takes more arguments, but it takes this, this, these words and it will print them to the screen. So if I hit save, and then that's control S in notepad, 
And then I'm going to open up the command prompt. Um, so I've pushed the Windows button on Windows. If you're using Linux, you can do this. How, you, I'm sure you know how to do this. Uh, C-O-M, it's this one here, command prompt. Click on that. I'm going to move that to the right and I'll choose this is my left. So now I have the two together. That was Windows and right did that. In the, the, when I say Windows, what I'm referring to is the little Windows button the, on your keyboard. Um, the picture of the Windows logo. Users admin. Now, I had this saved in documents. I'm going to CD change directory to documents. This is this is where I've put my Go package. You could have put it somewhere else, in which case you'll need to change directory CD to that place. Now, where did I put it? Programming. It was documents programming. I'm sure it was. Oh, wrong backslash. Um, I mostly use Linux, so I'm going to keep making that mistake. Programming. Um, and then it'll be Golang source um, lesson one. Okay, so we're going to go. We are now in this directory. So if you see users, admin, documents, programming, Golang source lesson one. Oh, you can actually change the font of this. If it's showing up on your screen as really tiny, you can change its font with a right click up here and properties, I think. Because um, on, on my computer, it showed up really small at first. So changing that has made it a lot more usable. The next thing we're going to do is we're in the right place. So if I type DIR, I can make sure the file exists. And in here we have, here we go, a file. We have a directory called dot, a directory called dot dot. These are, dot just means this directory, dot dot is the one above. So if you want to go up a directory, you can do that. Um, and then we have apparently a 61 byte file called lesson1.go. So I am going to hit go, run, lesson1.go and we'll see if we get any mistakes. Oh, I think Avast is going to complain at me, so I'm going to probably have to turn that off in a second. Oh, here it is. Nope, it didn't get that far. Lesson1.go, line 4, undefined, fumped in fumped.println. It's never heard of fumped before. So how am I supposed to use it? Well, actually, I I know that Fumt exists as a package, so I am going to use the phrase called import. So it was telling me on this line, line four, and this is why you probably don't want to use Notepad actually as your main text editor, because this doesn't show you line numbers. <laughs> um, and it's very helpful to have line numbers visible when it says lesson, there was a problem on line four. You, you kind of want to know where, where that was. So if you've got a, a thing with line numbers, that will help. Import and then open bracket, and I'll put a close bracket here. And inside these brackets, I'm going to write in quotes, FMT. And this is importing the package fumped from the library. And now when we save this, um, and then try and run the program, I don't know if Avast is gonna bring up a complaint, it might do. So if it brings up a complaint, I'm just gonna turn off the file protection for now. Because what we're doing here is that something that... Hello world! No, it didn't complain. There you go. So what it has done, go run lesson1.go. Hello. So I ran the program and it's done what I was hoping it would do. Fumpt, printf, hello world. So the first thing it did... Now we can actually get um, inside our function, basically everything happens in order. So if I put here... Um, fumpt.printf and then I write goodbye cruel world and then save it again I'm sure you won't be surprised that when I run it and I've just pushed up to bring up the last command that I did go run lesson1.go Hello world, goodbye cruel world. Notice there's no new line between them. There is actually a way of, of putting a new line and in lots of programming languages, that's a dash n. So I'm gonna put one of those here and a one of those here, save, and we run it. And there we go, hello world, goodbye cruel world. So you see they happen in order. Um, and now, I am going to define, we've used a function that exists in the package fumpt, but I want to define my own function that will 
print something else to the screen. So if I write another package, I, another function, I can define it here. Func, and I'll call it greet someone. Um, and for now, we'll leave those just open bracket, close bracket. I'll tell you why we have those brackets in a second. There's our thing here. Func, greet someone. Control S. Oh, and we'll put something in here. And, and in here we'll use fump.printf again because that's the only thing we've actually learned to do so far and I don't want to I don't want to overload you guys in in lesson one so um, hello to Peter close bracket control s and now if I put in here um, greet someone oh, I just can't spell someone open bracket close bracket now this should hopefully call this function up here and then printf hello to Peter now this is a bit pointless right now because we could have just put printf hello to Peter right here and it would work fine but if you want to do something that's really complicated and you want to use it several times it's helpful to have a function and that's why we write our own function so let's just test it and see if it works first um, go run less than one dog go so we've got hello world hello to Peter again we forgot the new line um, put one of those in control s um, hello to Peter goodbye cruel world and and actually we can call that function lots of times so if I actually put greet someone here it will do the same so we'll actually find two hello to Peters um, Hello world, hello to Peter, goodbye cruel world, hello to Peter. So we've made a function. Uh, but here we're assuming that we know someone's name and, and perhaps we don't know their name. Uh, or certainly at this point when in, in the function we want to be able to say hello to lots of different people. Um, so I'm going to accept a parameter. Now that's a bit of a weird thing to say and it was one of the things I, I forgot to mention that we're going to learn in here is the idea of a parameter because we haven't even worked out what a variable is yet. So I'm just going to use a parameter as our first variable. This is a, a variable is basically a place where you can store stuff. And I'm going to put a variable here. And the name of this variable, oh dear, is name. I'm going to call it name because we're going to say hello to someone. We need to know their name. And the next thing we write is the type that that variable will be. And in this case, it's a string, just like hello to Peter is a string. And just like hello world is a string because they come inside quotes, it's just a list of letters, name is going to be a string. And inside funct.printf, I'm going to change a really funny little thing. And I'm going to use a, func a thing called a percent sign, percent %s. And that says, at this point in this string, um, this is how the function reads it. This isn't something other programs do, but fumpt.printf is very good at formatting strings. So you can write the whole thing in and then you can stick the variables afterwards and it fits them in, which is kind of handy. It's it's called this because that's how it was called in C, which is a much, much older programming language. And so now if we write name here, and now instead, if now let's try and run the program and see if it complains. I'm pretty certain it's going to complain. Let's see if you can think why it might complain. So I'm going to read this out. Lesson one go at line 14. I'm pretty sure that's this line here. Not enough arguments in call to greet someone. So it's trying to call this function greet someone, but greet someone needs to know something. It needs to know a name. So I can send a string in this. So I'm saying there's not enough arguments. The thing it's missing here is a string. So if I'm going to call, I'm going to put Peter here. And I'm going to put another thing in here, which says. Um, um, we'll use another name. We'll use. Uh, we'll use Roz again. Right. And now I'm going to save this file. So now we've put something in the brackets, just like we did for printf, because printf took a parameter, that was a string, it took actually another parameter here. But our function up here, greet someone, needs a name. So, Peter, Roz, 
So hopefully you'll be able to guess what happens as I run this. But um, so I saved this. Come over here. Did I save? I'm expecting up. There we go. Go run lesson one dot go. So. Does this make sense to you? So we've got hello world, that's the first thing we did. Print hello world. And then the next thing we did was greet someone. Greet someone called Peter. And so the word Peter became name. And then later on we put hello to percent s. And then name was then placed in the middle of that percent s in, in, instead. And so name, Peter became the name here became the name here and then was squeezed into the middle of that percent s there and then it got printed so hello to peter and then we have a good printf goodbye crew world and then we have another greet someone but this time we've sent a different parameter and so this function has behaved slightly differently so name is now ros and so when it writes hello to percent s which was then going to be replaced by name percent s is now replaced by ros and that gets printed so that's everything you're going to learn for this lesson i'm going to set you a bit of a challenge and it's a fairly basic challenge all i want you to do is to add another function and this one will be a goodbye someone function and it will take a name just like this and it will say goodbye to them and then in the main function, you will call that for both Peter and Roz. And I'll see you at the next lesson. Don't forget to like and subscribe.